Okay, hi Nick. Hi. Hi, thanks for joining us for the interview today. So first to introduce ourselves, uh, I'm Daniel, and then that's Shash right over here. <laughs> um, hey, and then, yep, we'll be- He's down there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we'll be interviewing Nick today. So this interview really is for the first year CMS students that are starting at UTSC this fall, virtually. Um, and so this is kind of to give them an overview of the first year profs and their courses since they won't have the, you know, the in-person privilege of chatting uh, with Nick. So yeah, we have our list of questions here. But uh, before that, Nick, do you want to maybe quickly introduce yourself a little bit more? Sure. Uh, my name is Nick Cheng. I'm a graduate of the University of Toronto, both with a degree in mathematics and in computer science. And I've been here for as long as some of the furniture has been here. I guess first question, what have you been up to during quarantine? Ah, during quarantine, yes. Uh -huh. uh, well, I've actually been teaching uh, a summer course. Okay. So, um, gee, none of you are in my summer course. Why oh, aren't you I, taking my course? I, okay, I probably took it a while ago. <laughs> <laughs> um, is it B36? Yeah, uh, right. B36. I'm taking yeah. B36 fall next, so I'll probably be there. Aha, uh -huh. okay, all right. Uh, well, these guys were the, uh, the summer crew were the uh, dry run, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so they, they told me I have to be much meaner on the fall. No, I'm kidding, oh, yeah. I'm kidding. No, they say that every year though, so, <laughs> you know. So yeah, yeah, that's been taking a lot of my time. So uh, I it's that. Okay, our first question uh, is super broad. And it is, why did you decide to study computer science and pursue it as your main focus? Ah, yes. Well, computer science wasn't my initial main focus. Um, I've always wanted to study math, actually. Um, but you know, the math program back then, as it is now, requires you to take first year, well, two credits at least in math, mm -hmm. uh, sorry, in computer science, uh, the equivalent of today's uh, A08 and A48. Right. Uh, so then I took A08 and I took A48 or the equivalent thereof. And uh, I found it, gee, that was pretty easy. I got A's in them, <laughs> so I thought, let's try another one. And let's try another one. And before I knew it, I had completed the whole program. Um, but I still wanted to be a mathematician, so I completed my math program as well. Um, but, you know, so the decision time came when I graduated and start looking for a job. And so there's a choice of, do you get a math job or do you get a come side job and uh, as much as the math jobs actually paid more in the days on the days when I graduated uh, I felt that the come side jobs were more interesting and I went for the more interesting and that's how I landed in computer science so I'll start off with the second question Nick right sure. Okay, so um, let's talk, talking about EO8, which is one of the most beginner courses you teach uh, at UTSC. Uh, so with all the programming languages available, why specifically Python? Why, why are we using Python for EO8? And why not any other languages like Racket, which Waterloo uses? You want to find a programming language that uh, allows you to translate the, the concepts into the language and vice versa um, as smoothly as possible. The truth of the matter is no such language exists, um, at least not the commercially widely used ones. So Python has its faults, Java has its faults, C has its faults, and you know, you name any language that's out there, it has its faults. There's another factor that's also very important in the choice of the first year language. And that is, we would like to equip, equip our first year students with a language which can be put on their resume and be useful if they go out, say, to seek a summer job or a co-op job. Every, you're gonna hear people complain about it because there are downsides to Python. And, um, but you know, you have to settle on one, but this is simply the latest that we settled on. So uh, I don't know whether that answers the question, but you know, it's just that there is no good choice. 
True. Right. Completely. I completely agree. Yeah. Whereas, like, it's pretty. It's a pretty nice choice. Like, Python gives you a good head start through programming and computer science. And yeah. Then, so I like, uh, for instance, that Python. Um, you know, the, the, the one test is the Hello World program, <laughs> right? So you get to write a program to print Hello World. You can do that in Python in one line, right? right? Whereas in Java, you have to explain what was it public void main is or something like this and uh, so so you know a lot of baggage comes in right away right. python is neat but you know you shouldn't get the idea that python is ne- necessarily the best language but you should definitely not get the idea is that python is computer science so python you know whoever's taking AOH should view it as I'm learning computer science concept so that when I do take A48 in C, I can apply the same concepts uh, to C. But if you're thinking, oh yeah, I know Python, I've learned Python, therefore I should be fine. That's, that's not good. We want you to learn the concepts, not the language. You said about like, uh, when you learn Python, uh, you should really try to learn the computer science of it. So then for these maybe like more advanced students that say, oh, I've done Python, you know, I've done Turing, I've done Java, you know. Um, can I skip AOA? What, what are your thoughts on skipping that? That's a very good question again. So thank you. Um, so now um, our downtown campus uh, decided that we would, they, I think they decided that they would allow people to skip uh, 108, which is their AOA, uh, if they deem themselves uh, I guess, you know, able to do so. And, you know, last year um, in the first year class, there were some really, really good programmers um, who, you know, they, they, were, they were writing ray tracers, which are like fourth year graphics assignments um, on, you know, just for fun on the side. And so, uh, so yeah, those people hardly need AO8. Um, so the question is, where does the decision get made if you say, okay, you can decide for yourself whether you want to uh, skip AOA or not, right? So that's a possibility. That's, that's, that's one possibility. The problem with that is that a lot of students, uh, how would I like to put it? They don't know what they don't know. Right? So, <laughs> so they think they're ready and they say, yeah, I don't have to take AO8. I've been programming since I was 10 years old and I know all about this and I don't need to do this. And they go on and then they go into A48 and they fail. I've actually seen that happen. So, um, so you know, we could say everybody takes AO8 and that way we can guarantee that that won't happen. But at the same time, we, you know, peeve off a lot of students who are saying, yeah, I'm, I'm an expert on programming. You're, you're not teaching me anything new here. I'm really getting bored. So there's the trade-off. And we haven't found a good solution uh, one way or the other. Now, for the people who are bored or don't think they're learning anything, um, you know, a lot of students that I talk to are very, very GPA conscious. Um, I have a student talking to me for my B36 class right now. He's getting B minus so far. And he says, I don't know what to do. Oh my gosh, I'm t- doing terribly. Well, B minus is not so terrible, right? To me, it's not. I don't know about you. And so, um, you know, so if you're in the position of you've got, uh, you know everything that's in AOA already, then just take this as an opportunity where you don't have to do very much and still get an A plus and therefore boost your GPA. At the same time, concentrate on, I don't know, I think A31 and A67 are things that a lot of people just get bogged down on. So maybe just do that well, you know? So like, don't look at it as we're wasting your time. Looking at, we're giving you an opportunity to boost your GPA in an easy way. We've had a student who just like didn't go to any classes in the AO8 and they missed it when the memory model was introduced. They didn't know the memory models because I don't think- It's quite an important you, one. 
If you dicker on your own, <laughs> you don't learn the memory model. Exactly. If you went through high school, you don't learn the memory model. And so by the time the final came around, that guy failed. So, you know, uh, I, I don't know. I'm not sure what to do about it. It's, uh, you know, we don't seem to teach the memory model quite as much now uh, with Anya leading it. But when we did, I used to, I used to say to people, okay, if you've been sleeping up to now, it's time to wake up because I don't think you've seen this before. <laughs> so which part of your job do you enjoy more, teaching or the research? Ah, teaching or the research. Um, you know, I guess, you know, I, I'm one of these guys who like to do, I don't get bored. So I like to do the same thing because I always think, oh, I'm looking for how to do it better. So it's like looking for perfection, but knowing I'll never get it. And even if I do get it, it's, situations will change and therefore I have to readjust again. Um, right. So um, I guess, you know, I always like to say, okay, how can I, how can I work this better? Um, with the course that I just finished, because it's the first time I taught anything completely online, I had certain ideas of what would work, what wouldn't work. And so as a bonus question on the final exam, I said, okay, give me some feedback. What worked, what didn't work. So make suggestions on how you, want, you might want to improve this. To me, these trying these new things, like getting feedback that way, or, you know, with the online courses, there's so many new things. I, I, I like to experiment and I like to see what works better. Uh, what works worse and so it's those are the fun things right right absolutely absolutely Daniel do you want to continue yeah. next? so yeah. actually uh, this is something I have extremely fond memories of um, speaking of you and Brian so yeah I briefly overlooked like one of the papers you guys wrote and I had experienced myself I think you know what it is mm -hmm. uh, it's the code mangler so Thoughts on the code mangler. Uh, will it be used in AO8 again? I certainly did not have too much fun with that in my year of AO8. Um, so uh, in AO8, it isn't it isn't used because uh, I actually have little, very little to do with the creation of the tests. Uh, Anya does almost all of it, and she doesn't use it, which is fine. Um, it's 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 okay. Um, Programming questions can be uh, time consuming to mark and could be, uh, could be difficult because it's, you know, you say, here's a, a specification, write the function that does this, right? So you, you do that and it's very open-ended because there are actually lots of different ways to do that, um, you know, even between for loops and while loops and things like that, there are different ways to do, do this. Um, so you're going to get a very, very wide range of solutions on a test with both correct solutions and incorrect solutions. And that is tedious from a grading point of view. It's hard to mark. Okay, is this wrong solution worth three out of five and that other one is worth four out of five like it's it gets to be difficult and so the code mangler was uh, introduced to try to address that problem so the code mangler in my mind allows you to even to to prescribe what i call as a metric because you know for those who don't know the code mangler uh, question is that we actually give you the solutions to uh, your, the program you're supposed to write, only it's shuffled. And so the lines are all shuffled and you just have to put, put the pieces back together. So um, what you can do is actually elect, you know, write a program that measures how close your solution is to the actual solution. And so technically, if we go far enough, we can actually use the code manga and have everything auto-graded, which we haven't come to. I'd like some students to work on it uh, as a uh, <laughs> either a project or a, 
you know, we can pay students in two ways. Either we give them a credit because they, so it's independent studies of some sort, or there are summer research uh, uh, grants that we could actually pay them with money. Great piece of uh, shameless advertisement there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I guess one really quick follow up to the code mangler. Um, there's a lot of websites out there, for example, like uh, Lee Code that uh, helps you practice interview, coding interview questions. The age old question comes like, are you really getting better at programming or are you just getting better at kind of passing the test, so to speak, of the coding interview? Yeah, yeah. So uh, I was worried about that. I thought, you know, is testing using Codemangler the same as testing using the traditional way where we just say, write a program to do X and then, you know, you do it. Um, so the Codemangler paper is in fact uh, that experiment to see if there is a difference between testing one way and testing the other way. So in that case, there were two questions on the test. Uh, they both approximately equal in difficulty. And one was asked the traditional way, one was asked the mango way, code mango way. So uh, do people who do better on traditional way also do better on code mangler and vice versa. And so uh, I believe the result is that the, there is a correlation uh, and uh, that's why code mangler is accepted as being an okay way to test. So many students know that you have a reputation for doing something special on Halloween. So what can first year students expect this year? Oh boy, you know, I have no idea. I, I don't actually tend to think ahead on this. Uh, I think uh, I, I did something last year, but I think Paco forced me. So like, I didn't have a choice. <laughs> I was going to just slink away, but <laughs> so I actually don't know. Um, so, so you'll have to, you'll have to wait. I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we all love to see the fun neck being presented in class. That's one of the reasons we come for come for classes as well. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I think uh, that's it for our interview. We got a bunch of questions uh, down with you. Thanks a ton for joining us today, Nick. Oh, you're very welcome. Uh, anything to help? Uh, anything to sort of pique the interest of the incoming class, that, that is good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what we had in mind, yeah. All right.